Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the delay of this uh, document camera, uh, but I hope it's working now. I also turned on the recording, so I hope the, we'll have the uh, class recording. Um, so last week, we started to talk about expectation. And before that, I started to introduce the concept of random variables. So what are random variables? They are just objects, mathematical objects that has a probability mass function, or essentially a limiting thing of the histogram. So once you have that in mind, everything else will be a lot easier. What is expectation? Expectation is the average of that probability mass function. If I give you the histogram, I calculate the average, that's called the empirical average. And now if I give you the probability mass function, which is the limiting thing, you're going to get the expectation. So today what I want to do is to talk about a few examples of how do we calculate expectation and then some mathematical properties of expectation. Then we can talk about variations of that, including the variance, standard deviation, and things like that. So to start with, I want to go back to this example where you have this um, midterm exam score of some classes and then you have a distribution. I asked how do we calculate the average by just looking at this histogram without going through the table. And the discussion was that let's just count the number of students in each bin and then times the, the height of the bin with this, the, the midpoint of the bin and you start to uh, sum everyone up. Then you can sort of get the approximate value of the average, which is pretty good. The concept of expectation is exactly the same. Now, instead of having this histogram, you will have the probability mass function. And the probability mass function for discrete random variables, they are essentially just different, different uh, stems, and then you count the height of the stems and the, the stage of each stem. So the definition of the expectation goes as follows. You have three parts. You have the percentage, which is the px, and then you have the state, which is the x, and then you have the summation, which sums over all the possible cases in your sample space. So pictorially, what that means is that if you have uh, this example, you have uh, five states, x1 through x5, each stage, you have a height of the probability mass, P1 to P5. Then the expectation would just be the height P1 times the state X1 plus P2 times X2 plus P3 times X3 all the way to P5 times X5. You sum everyone up, you will get this expectation. Now we can also think of it as the weighted average. You have all these five states then you have all these weights. These weights, they will sum to one. So you're allocating, let's say 20% for the state x1, 30% to state x2, and so on. So you are calculating the weighted average. You do this kind of exercise all the time. I give you the, the uh, uh, exam scores, homework scores, midterm scores, Right? And I say, okay, homework will count for 20%, midterm will count for 30%, exam will count for how many, how many percent. And then I ask, calculate the weighted average. What do you do? You say, okay, 20% for the homework, I just multiply the homework score by 0.2. Then I have 30% for the midterm, I calculate the, the midterm score times 0.3. Right? Uh, you know that because of this weighted average, when you sum all these weights, they will sum to one. You got, you're going to get 100%. Um, and so this is exactly the same thing what's happening in this expectation. You're taking this weighted average. You have this score times your percentage. Remember, there's a score times percentage. You, you cannot miss one of them. Okay? You, you need to have the score and also the percentage. And you need to have a summation. And that's the underlying principle. OK, so uh, let's skip these. And then let's go to some examples. This is the first example where you have a probability mass function of um, a random variable x. And then you have three states, 0, 
1 and 2. So if I draw the, uh, the PMF, you will have 0, 1, and 2 here. Uh, for 0, you have a height of uh, 1 fourth. And then for 1, you have a height of 1 half. And for 2, you have a height of uh, 1 fourth. I ask, what is the expectation? Well, the expectation will just be 0 uh, times uh, 1 fourth plus 1 times 1 half plus 2 times 1 fourth. So that's going to give me uh, the 0, this is 1 half, this is uh, 1 half, this is 1. So therefore, in this example, the expected value uh, is, is 1. Now, the second example is the following. Let's say you have an unfair coin. The probability of getting ahead is uh, 3 quarter. Then uh, you let x be the random variable uh, uh, such that uh, if you get ahead, you're going to get 1. So you find the expected value of x. So now, uh, for all these problems, um, uh, what we should do is to draw the PMF. The PMF of this case would be that you have two states, 0 and 1. Uh, when it is 1, you get uh, 3 quarter. When it is 0, you get a quarter. So I ask, what is the expectation of x? And this has to be, anyone? Yes. 3 fourth, and let's just, calculate, let's just work out the steps. 0 times 1 fourth plus 1 times 3 fourth, and so you get 3 fourth. Good. Okay. So now, as you can see in these examples, as you can see in these examples, uh, the, the probability um, mass function will give you a diagram, and then you're going to calculate the, um, the uh, uh, oh, weighted average. You're going to calculate weighted average. What does this weighted average really mean? What does this weighted average really mean? So in this example, let's look at example number two. You have a coin of either head or tail. Okay, head means one, tail means zero. And then the, this coin is unfair, and so you get three-quarter probability of getting a, a head. And so the average, Average is uh, three quarter. What, what, what does this three quarter mean? You see the question here? Like zero is head, uh, zero is tail, one is head. What is three quarter? I find expected value, I find the average. What does that three quarter mean? Yes. Is the probability getting a head? Is the probability getting a head? Um, but how do you visualize this? Now, the, the way that I, I used to think about the, the, the way the average in these discrete cases is that you have, um, you have two balls. Okay, you have two balls. One ball has a weight of one quarter, the other ball has a, has a weight of three quarter. You have a ball, okay? You have a ball. And then you're going to calculate uh, the center of gravity. The center of gravity. Now, the center of gravity, of course, it, it, uh, it, it depends on the state, right? So this state has a zero, this state has a one, right? Now, um, when, when you think about this, uh, you, when you have a mass on the left hand side, when you have mass on the right hand side, that, that should be a center of gravity. That, that three quarter, this number here, is telling you where the center of gravity is of the two sides. One, one end would be zero, the other end would be one. One end is zero, one end is one, okay? Now, if you have a fair coin, then the center of gravity will be zero. When you have a biased coin, the center of gravity will be shifted towards one. It means that you have a higher chance of, of leaning on the one, okay? So, so that's the average. So if I give you this zero and one and head and tail, you're not going to get a three quarter of a head. There's nothing called three quarter of a head. But you have more probability of 
landing to the head. And that's the meaning of this expectation. Question here. OK, so excellent question. How is it different than the probability? So here is a very, very special example where the, the state is 0 and 1. Now I can change the state to minus 1 and 1. OK, so let's look at this example. If I change the state to be um, minus 1 and 1, I have uh, 1 quarter here. I have 3 quarter there. Right? I ask, what is the expectation of this um, random variable? Uh, then the expectation of x will be minus 1 times 1 quarter plus 1 times 3 quarter. So I get 1 half. OK, I get 1 half. Uh, again, this 1 will mean head. This minus 1 can mean tail. That, that's just the encoding I put into the problem. It doesn't matter, right? OK, so now you calculated the expected value is 1 half. Where's 1 half? 1 half is here. This is 1 half. So again, this is the center of gravity. I give, I give you a line, and then there are two ends, and then the center of gravity is here. That's the same thing as you are calculating. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1, half, one quarter, this is 3 quarter. Uh, the center of gravity is here. This is 3 quarter. OK? So the center of gravity is, is always relative um, to the center of gravity is always relative to, to the line that you define the state. Yes, question. Correct. Expected value can be negative. So here is another example. For one day morning, I wake up with some weird idea. I want to call head to be minus 100. Okay. You can do that. Why? Why not? So this is, this is called a head. No one would want to do it, but let's say that morning I want to do it. And then the tail, I want it to be minus 200. Okay? I say, uh, this is, this is uh, 3 quarter, this is uh, 1 quarter. I ask, what is the expected value of x? I can do that. It would just be minus 200 times 1 uh, quarter plus uh, minus 100 times uh, 3 quarter. So that's going to give me... What number is it? Oh, um, I'm making a, a trap for myself. This is what? 975, right? Minus 125. You can get that. Okay. Now, now what is this minus 125? It's still here. Okay. So center of gravity never changes. It's always there, as long as you're. Um, as long as your um, probability mass values they do not change, the relative position is always there. Okay, so so that's the that's the meaning of this uh, expectation. It's finding the center of gravity of of the state. Yes. Oh, why do we want to calculate the expectation? Okay, that's an excellent question. Why do we want to calculate the class average of exam? That's the, that's the, so, so, so let's think about why do we want to calculate expectation, then why do we want to calculate the average of class exam? And we can ask, why do we want to calculate the average of um, 100 measurements of the temperature of this room? Right? So we can start to ask these questions. And they have, there are lots of scientific meanings. Let's say you walk into a physics lab, you take measurements, and then you take a thousand of these measurements. Okay? So now you start to analyze the data. You plot the histogram. You look at these things. And then, you, and then and let's say your boss came and asked you, tell, tell me what you find from this data set. That you, you're not going to draw the histogram uh, precisely. You're going to provide some summary statistics. What are the summary statistics? I can tell you. Mean, variance, skewness, kurtosis. Some, some of these quantities, right? You say, okay, where's the center? How, how, how wide is it spread? Uh, how symmetric is the distribution? How many bumps are there? You want to tell these summary statistics. Uh, expectation is the first order statistics, okay? And then we're going to look at the second order statistics, the third order statistics, and so on.
So there are different, different order statistics that you can summarize from the data. So I hope this example illustrates the difference between, uh, uh, not, not, not the difference between, but it illustrates the, the, the concept of center gravity, or meaning, what is the meaning of this expectation? This example is a little bit more calculation involved, um, um, but I think it's a good exercise to go through. So you have a probability mass function defined in this way. You have a c over 2 to the power k. k goes from 1, 2, all the way to infinity. I want to find c. I want to find c. Okay. So, um, and then I want to find the expected value of x. Both uh, parts uh, will require to take the uh, infinite sum. For the first one, we know that when you sum over all the possible uh, k's, uh, k going from 1 to infinity, you are going to get 1. And uh, in this example, you have a summation of c over 2 to the power k. k goes from 1 to infinity. You're going to get 1. And what is this guy? This is going to be c times 1 half times plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus infinity. Okay, that has to be 1. So what is c? Uh, let's just calculate this infinite series. This is uh, you start with a half. And then you have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. This is going to give you 1 half, uh, 1 minus 1 half. So that's going to give you 1. Okay? So what is C? C is 1. Okay, good. Now let's find the expected value of x. The expected value of x is just the summation of k times p of k, k go from 1 to infinity. Uh, and so you have the summation k going from 1 to infinity of k times uh, 1 over 2 to the power k. Uh, wait a minute, how do I calculate this? Oh. What can I do here? Well, you have another formula, which is that uh, 1 plus r plus uh, 2r, is it? Am I right? 2r squared? Like this? Is it like this? Okay. All right, so you have this formula, and this formula is going to give you 1 over 1 minus r squared. Okay, so you have this formula. So then you can see this is k going from 1 to infinity, k times 1 over uh, r to the power k. Right? And so, um, am I right? I need to think. I think I, okay, I think we are making a mistake, right? 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot dot dot, that is 1 over 1 minus r. And so when you take the derivative, you have 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared plus dot dot dot, that's going to give you 1 minus 1 squared. Okay, so if you take the derivative, there should be one, one, one thing down. So it should be this. Okay. Okay, so let's just do the self-correction. Uh, now, when you have um, uh, this quantity here, then what do we do? Well, you can, you can write it in terms of this, so you can pull it out, out, and then you have the summation k going from 1 to infinity, k times r to the power k minus 1, right? And so you have this r, and then you have uh, k will start from 1, so you have 1 plus 2, r plus 3r squared plus dot dot dot. So that's going to give you r times 1 over 1 minus r squared. My r is half. So you have 1 half times 1 over 1 minus half squared. 
So that's going to give me 2. So expected value of x is 2. Okay. So uh, it's a little bit more algebra involved, but I think we have all the tools. Okay, so now if you're not following, just go back to uh, this equation. You have, you have this uh, infinite series, and then you sum them and take the derivative. You can get a square, and then just apply to this formula, and then you can get to uh, the expected value, which is 2. Now, let's look at the diagram and see if it makes sense. This probability mass function has, um, has the shape of 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. When it is 1, you have a half. When it is 2, you have a quarter, and so on. OK, I ask, where is the expected value? Basically, I'm asking, where is the center of gravity? OK, where is the center of gravity? Here you have half of the mass, and here you should have another chunk of the mass. And it turns out that it is somewhere here, which makes sense. I don't know the exact value, but at least by looking at this diagram, it makes sense. It cannot be on the negative side. It cannot be on the far right-hand side. It's somewhere in the middle. It makes sense. You see that? OK. Now, I do not need to start with 1. I can start with a negative value. In that case, my expected value can be negative 2. Okay. So the difference between the expected value and the probability is that the probability has to be always positive, whereas the expected value can be positive or negative. Keep that in mind. Is this problem OK? OK, cool. All right, let's work on this one. Uh, let's consider a game where you, the, where you can flip the coin three times. The reward of getting two heads is one. The reward of getting three heads is zero. The reward of getting zero, one head is zero. Uh, the cost of entering the game is $1.50. On average, what is the net gain? like a gambling game. OK, so how do we do that? How do we do this problem? Now, you have, um, you have many, many words here. So let's just translate these words into the math. Clearly, you have three coins. You want to sum the number of coins to give you uh, the, the, the heads. OK? OK, so how do, we, how do we calculate that? Well, so you have, you have 0, 1, 2, and 3. OK, you have four states. 0 means that you flip, the, you flip the coin three times, all of them are tail. 3 means that you flip the coin three times, all of them are head. So you have four states, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So now let's ignore this uh, 1 and 8 and 0 for, for a while, OK? So these dollar signs, let's ignore them for a while. But let's just write down the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, or 3. What are those numbers? What are those probabilities? Flip the coin three times. What is the probability of getting three zeros? You've got to get tail and tail and tail, half times a half times a half. You have one eighth, OK? So this is one eighth. The probability of getting three heads, you need to get head and head and head. One half times one half times one half. So you get one eighth. OK, good. What is the probability of getting one head? Head, tail, tail, OK? Tail, head, tail, 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 head. Three out of eight. Three out of eight. And then the other one, of course, is also three out of eight. Good. So we have the probability mass function for this experiment. We are all happy. But I'm not asking you to calculate the expected value of this random variable. I'm doing a translation from this PMF to another PMF. The new PMF is what? Should have what state? It's not 0, 1, 2, 3. 
That's a new PMF. This this is this is the this is x. Okay, x is uh, x equals to number of head. I actually want y. Y is the dollar. Okay, so how do I map x uh, to y? Zero, one, and eight. What is the height or what is the probability mass for zero? One eighth? One half? How do you get that one half? You get this one plus that one. You combine these two cases into one. Okay, so it would be this and that. Uh, you get one half. Cool. And then, well, what is the probability of getting a one? Three eighth. The probability of getting an eight, one eighth. So this is your PMF. Now, I draw this in red color because I'm combining two states into one. And this kind of operation is very common. I, I start with, I start with um, uh, some measurements. I start with some kind of temperature. I want to translate it to another um, a measurement where I say that the negative temperature, I'm going to ignore them. Okay? So then I'm going to group everyone into the same mass. So this is called a function or transformation random variable which we'll, we will learn them in more details later on. But in this example, I think it is clear that this is the original PMF. This is the transformed PMF. I want to calculate expected value of x or y. y, we will want to find expected value of y. In this case, how should I do it? State times probability plus state times probability. 0 times 1 half plus 1 times 3 eighth plus 8 times 1 eighth. So you are going to get 3 eighth plus uh, uh, 8 over 8, so you get 11 over 8. This is the expected value of y. Question? Uh, yeah, expected value can be bigger than 1. In fact, expected value can be negative 125, right? Expected value can be 1,522, okay? So, so that's expectation. Uh, the probability cannot be bigger than 1, and that's what you're seeing here. In the probability mass, they cannot be bigger than 1. Uh, okay, so now the cost of entering the game is $1.50. What is the, uh, on average, what is the net gain? What is the net gain? Well, it is, this is, uh, if the denominator is 8, then the numerator is 12, okay? So you enter this game, the expected value of, of gain, of course, it has to be 11 over 8 minus your cost. Okay, this, this is your reward, this is your cost. And so you have negative 1 over 8. So if you do not do this calculation, you just play this game with someone, then you're just stupid. Okay, you're going to lose. Now, it doesn't mean that if you play the game once, you're going to lose. Okay, if you, if you win once, just leave the game. Okay, you have a very good luck that day. Okay, now, if you insist on playing it over and over, then you're really stupid. Because the calculation shows you that on average, you're going to lose. So don't play that game. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, every game that you're going to play, you're going to lose. Right? If you do once or twice, who knows if you're lucky or not. So that's also the principle of casino. Uh, you will always feel that you will have certain chance of winning, but in the long-term average, you're guaranteed to lose. 
uh, it, they do have to set the number uh, to be too low, too terribly low. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be fooled to enter the casino. Uh, it's usually about 40 something percent. You feel, um, oh, I have a chance of winning. And, and the, the, why do people they lose money is that they just stay there for too long. Okay, if you if a good luck that day, you better just leave soon. <laughs> okay, now if you have a bad day on the first day, don't think that the second day you're going to win back because the more game you play, the 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 ultimately you're going to fall into that trap of a long term lose. Okay, so let's go back to here. The difference between the true mean and the sample mean, uh, I, br I briefly mentioned that before, and I'm going to state it again here. Uh, there are two different symbols. One is the expected value of a random variable x. The other one is just uh, put an overline on that, uh, that symbol x. The sample mean is what you calculate from the data, one specific piece of data. That's the average. Expected value is something that you generate from the model. This is going to limit, this is going to be the limit of the sample mean. Okay, so when you have infinitely many samples, then you're going to converge to this. So let me write that more carefully. This is going to be sum of n going from 1 to uh, capital N of xn. You just take this uh, number, you have infinitely many big n's, very, very big n's, then this thing is going to converge to expected value of x. Now this convergence will require some explanation and this is called the law of large number. We will learn that later. And this is one of the, one of the two big theorems in probability. Law of large number means that when you take the sample average, it's gonna to converge to the true mean. Uh, existence of expectation. Do expectations always exist? We are not checking whether the expectation is a negative number or whether it is, it is bigger than one. That is allowed. You can have expectation to be 1,500. You can have expectation to be negative 500. That's always allowed. But there are random variables where the expectation do not exist. And you ask, how can this ever be possible, the expectation doesn't exist. Now it is possible, and here is one example. This is a legitimate probability mass function. I say that it is a legitimate probability mass function because number one, it is always positive. Number two, you can prove that it sums to one. You may not be able to see it right now, but you can, you can go to Wikipedia and find out that this equation, when you sum them, it will give you one. Three uh, um, is increasing. Right? If you look at the um, CDF, it's increasing. So uh, it, it, this is the, uh, um, you don't even need a CDF to be increasing. As long as you have positive values, uh, it, it, is, it is a legitimate PMF. Okay, so you have, um, you have this uh, random variable x uh, with the PMF uh, given by this equation. Now, what is the expected value of x? The expected value of x would just be the summation of k times my probability value, which is pi squared times uh, divided by k squared, k going from 1 to infinity. If I start to do this calculation, you can, of course, uh, pull out the 6 over pi squared, and then you start to sum over this. Okay, and what is this? This is one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus dot dot dot. And the sad news is that this is going to plus infinity. It will diverge. It is a, it is a divergent sequence of numbers. So when you sum them up, it will just go to infinity. So your your um, your probability uh, mass function is well defined but then your expectation is not well defined. And there are random variables like that. This is called a Cauchy uh, random variable. The Cauchy random variable does not have expected value. 
it will have a second order uh, uh, movements, uh, which, is, uh, which is the variance, but it doesn't have the first order uh, movement, which is the expected value. And there are random variables like that. So how do we make sure that the random variable will have uh, an a average? Uh, it, it has to satisfy this property. It's called the absolutely summable criteria, that if you take the probability and you multiply with the absolute value of the state, and if this sum is finite, then you say that this random variable will have an expected value. Okay, so not all random variables will have, this, will have the expected value. And for those who have the expected value, then they have to be absolutely summable. It's just like the Fourier transform. Not all functions, you can take the Fourier transform. Only those functions, they are square integrable and fulfill all these discontinuity properties, then you can take the Fourier transform. Not everyone you can take the Fourier transform. Just like the expectation, not everyone you can take the expectation. Did you get a point? Okay. So there are random variables that cannot, that may not have the expected value, but you can still talk about their, their variance, their high order statistics. Any questions so far for the basic properties of the expectation? Now, if not, let me tell you a bit more of the properties. Uh, this is lecture 3.5, um, but in the beginning of the lecture, we're actually talking about uh, the second half of 3.4, which is the property of expectations. The properties of expectations, uh, there are few. Um, let me see what would be the best way to explain it. Okay, let's do this. Suppose you have this midterm score. Okay. This is the midterm um, score distribution. So uh, one day morning, I suddenly feel very sorry for the class. Okay, I feel very sorry for the class. I made the test too hard, and so I say. Okay, let's universally, everyone, get 10 more points. Okay, so what will happen to the average? What will happen to the mean? Easy. Everyone move up by 10 points, so the average will move up by 10 points. How do we write that equation down? So you have a random variable x which has this histogram, and then you know the expect a value of x, which is the uh, average, and let me just define it as mu, okay? All right, so um, I say, uh, look, I am going to add 10 points to everyone in the class. No one question, what will happen to my histogram? Go up by 10 points, to the right by 10 points, okay? Now, now, you feel this is really, really trivial, okay. But I promise every semester we have students saying that when you multiply, when you add things, you're gonna move up the, you're gonna move up the histogram. Whenever, whatever operation you do, you're moving left or right. You never move them up or down, okay? All right, so keeping that in mind. So let's say this is 50, and so now the new histogram will be shifted to the right by 10 points what will be the expression of this shifted version of the histogram? It will be x plus c. x plus c. Now, what is x plus c? This is x. This is x plus c. So this is uh, 60. Okay, so you shift to the left, uh, so you shift to the right. Now this x plus c, you are not adding the probability mass. What is x, x plus c? So let's say um, I have a, a random variable x, x will have uh, three states, one, two, and three. So these are the three states of this random variable x. If I say x plus two, this is a new random variable, 
What are the states? The state will be 3, 4, and 5. The probability of getting a 1, let's give a number, maybe 1 fourth, 1 uh, quarter, uh, 1 half, and 1, one quarter. Okay? So the probability of getting a 3 will remain 1 quarter, uh, which is the same as 1. The next one will be 1 half and then 1 quarter. You're just moving the state, you're never moving the probability values, the heights that you have preserved. Okay, so that is the idea of this uh, histogram moving to the right. You're just moving the numbers, you're moving the state uh, to the right. Then what is the expected value of x plus c? The expected value of x plus c will just be mu plus c because in the middle you just have expected value of x plus the expected value of c, but c is a constant, so you just have a c. So mu plus c, which makes perfect sense, 50 go to 60. Average just goes up by 10 points. If you want to prove this result, that's also very easy because if you want to prove this expected value of x plus c, it will just be the sum of x plus k plus c and then p of k, k going from minus infinity to infinity, right? And then you have this summation of k times p of k, k going from minus infinity to infinity, uh, plus c times the summation of p of k from minus infinity to infinity, and this is just 1. And this is uh, mu, this thing is mu, this thing is c, so mu plus c, proved. Now, so let's go back to uh, the, the slide. So that's property, not property number two, I think that's property number four, okay? Property number four, when you have x plus c, uh, you have expected value of x plus c. So that's gonna uh, shift the thing. That's just one property, okay? Um, is this okay? Very easy, right? Yes, question. This is um, x plus c. Um, I'm sorry? C will be 10. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, let's ask another question. So, uh, that day, I changed my mind. Instead of giving everyone 10 points, um, let me just um, scale scale uh, everyone by 1.5. Okay, you have a score, and then I scale everyone by 1.5. So let's say you have 50, I give you, I will give you 75. Okay, so don't ask me how to clip it, but uh, let's just say that, okay, 75, okay. So everyone will be multiplied by 1.5. What will happen to the average? And assume that, that uh, there's no upper bound of, of the, there's no clipping. What will happen to the average? Well, okay, so now, so now you have this uh, expected value. I have a random variable, and I have a constant c. Guess what? Expected value of x is mu, right? And then, then what is expected value of c times x? The c times mu. The c will come out. Why? Well, if you want to prove it's the expected value of c times x, it will be summation of c times k times probability of uh, k, uh, k going from minus infinity to infinity. Then the c will come out. So you have k times p of k, k will from minus infinity to infinity, this is mu. So you have c times mu. What happens to your figure? So let's say here is your uh, random variable x, and c is two times, okay, two times. So what will happen to the uh, to the values. Uh, let, let's, let's just do this, okay. Maybe a simpler example. This is um, one and two and three. You have these three masses. 
Okay, this is your x. What will happen to 2x? Move up by 2, by, by move up? Okay, thank you. You just make a good kind of example. Please do not make that mistake, okay? You're not gonna, you will never move the probability mass up. You will, whatever you do, you can only move to the left or to the right. Okay, that's the, that's the rule of thumb. You would never move things up. Okay, so here, here's what's gonna happen. One will become two. Two will become four. Three will become six. Okay, the height will still be uh, the same. Very important. Okay, so before we dismiss, let me let me uh, let me give you one more example. Okay, so so this is this is the um, this is a scaling uh, property number three, right? So I I scale the random variable x, and then uh, the c will come out. Okay, so now let's work on this example. And then the third day morning, I wake up. Um, I just changed my mind again. Let's just square everyone. Wow, you don't, you're like, why do we want to scale, square the, the score? Don't, don't ask me. Okay, and just have some weird idea of squaring everyone. So now you have a random variable x, okay? And then you want to take this. What will happen? Would it be equal to expected value of x square? Okay, the answer is no. Okay. Um, this expectation is a linear operation. By linearity, I mean that you can shift and you can multiply. You cannot take power. Now, what happens to the, to the histogram? Let's say I have um, this again. One, two, and three. Would I square, or would I make the height higher? No, okay? What will happen to my histogram? One will go to one, two will go to four, three will go to nine. The height is still the same height. This is x, this is x squared. All right? And this is already the property of this one is um, there's a gx, and my g will be a uh, x squared. So when we come back on Wednesday, we're gonna go through these properties again and make sure that you understand these properties. For now, just make sure you understand that you can only shift to the left, to the right, but not up and down. Okay, so I will see you next time.